Today, we're insulating a 150-year-old building on a crawl space, and it's nasty. Stay with us. Mm. Ah! Wow, you gotta love really good quality safety gear. Listen, I get a lot of people asking me on their channel, how come you don't use this? Where's your mask? I got the gear, folks. It's just that on camera, it's very difficult to talk while I'm wearing it. So we're going to put this one away today. And I'm going to introduce you to this. This is my new favorite mask in the whole world. It's from Moldex. It has a special built-in nose piece here. So when you wear it, you don't have to pinch that metal. It gets a great seal. You can wear glasses with it as well. And because it has a valve, we checked it out. I can wear this and talk at the same time. So yes, I'm going to put the diaper on my face. And we are going to talk all things insulation today. Now listen, we have a 150 year old house built on a crawl space. And if that isn't enough challenge to get a good thermal break and insulation, combining all these construction materials and techniques and all of the renovations, it's just a nightmare. So I'm gonna take you through the process of how to identify what to do from the inside and what to do from the outside to make sure you get a good thermal break and a good air seal, because both of these things are super important or you're gonna get this kind of disaster. Let me show you. So here's the problem with this kind of house construction. It's typical balloon construction, which means that underneath here, we've got a stacked stone wall and we have these boards here traveling straight through down onto that stone. And that's this, the point load, okay, that carries all the weight of the house. These floorboards here, it's the subfloor and flooring all in one. <laughs> And what they do is they cut around these and slide it in, kind of like finishing a deck. Now, uh, the outside of the house, they've got these wonderful barn boards. It's solid one inch thick, and they clad the entire home. And these boards actually transfer all the weight and keep the house from sliding left and right. So this is a stability. It's part of the structure. So remember when you're working on these old houses, that stuff is structure. If you're going to remove it, understand what you're doing and how you're going to replace the structural component. But here's what happens. We have a stone wall downstairs underneath the crawl space, which means we don't have a thermal break. So we have cold air and hot air mixing coming up through these gaps, hitting this wood, gets incredibly soft. What happens is mice from outside feel the heat coming out and they start eating and they eat a hole right through. Now that's the vinyl siding I'm touching on the other side. And these holes are all over the place. So what we're doing is before we worry about our thermal break, we need a rodent break. <laughs> so what we have to do is take this blocking, stick it in here and create some nice solid dry wood to get a nice rodent break. And then what we're going to do is after we're done the interior of the house, we will then peel the skin off the outside of the house. Okay. And we will install a moisture barrier on the outside of this wood, like a tie par. So we have a new water deflection system. There's no sense insulating the entire of your house if you're not going to keep the moisture up because it'll rot and the animals will come and they will eat through anything you build. So first order of business is to stick that in. Then we can insulate and then we have to deal with the crawl space itself and bring that thermal break up to the floor and then from the floor up to the roof. Remember, no matter what you do in an old house, you're going to have this situation where this floorboard is going to be the point of condensation, okay? Nothing you can do to fix that. So it's important that you have air moving on the inside of this wall. Always have the ability for moisture that gets trapped in this floor to work its way through the rest of the frame and out of the building. So don't seal it up too tight on the outside, which is why tie power is perfect. So we're going to screw this in, add our insulation, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to seal from this part of the house, which is an addition to the old exterior, okay? Because what they've got done here, they just jammed in a little bit of fiberglass and we know that's not gonna cut it. So we're gonna open up this corner and have a little bit of fun. Okay, now real quick mention, anybody who's seen this show for a while, this is not a yellow drill. <laughs> Here's the reason. Um, they came up with a new brushless drill system for rigid. And this is about $150, $170 cheaper than the DeWalt. So I bought these just to test them out on this project for the next few months. Because I kind of like rigid tools, but at the end of the day, they weren't brushless before. They would burn out. They just didn't have the energy and the torque. But 
if this tool works, then this is going to be a great recommendation for you, and it'll save you a lot of money. So I'm thinking this might end up being the perfect homeowner tool. I just want to give it a test run before I give it too much of a recommendation. All right, now you'll see, I've already been in the crawl space on this side of the building and done this exterior wall. And we put a lot of foam in here because when you're tying together old stone wall with a new stone wall and then wood and wood, you end up with a lot of air gaps and crevices. Secret to insulating an old house is to find all these things and fill them properly. So let's, let's bust into here and take a look at how they tied this building together. Wow, that is actually a really good view. I'm gonna pull this little piece off here. All right. Okay, kids, here we go. This is what I'm talking about. All right, this space right here. This is nasty. All right, now that we've got this all explored, let's understand what's going on. Here's the framing. This is a two by three. <laughs> Don't ask me why they didn't put a two by four in that corner, but it's two by three. Somewhere along the way, they cut away the old exterior, okay, which is this, it's, a, it's like a tongue and groove overlap wood cedar siding, okay? And then, I don't even know what they were thinking putting this back, but whatever. This gap right here, my whole hand can go in there. And you know on the outside, they have a vinyl siding. So if the inside isn't sealed off, the outside isn't gonna be sealed off. Yep, that wood on the outside goes to the end of this as well. So this whole gap exists right to the outside. Stuffing a little bit of this crap in there isn't gonna work. Because as soon as you stuff it, you compress it. And the insulation only works when it's not compressed. So the way we fill this gap is right here. Now, I know everybody's seen the foam guns. Most DIYers use a, a can. It's got the little nozzle on it, right? But this is the perfect DIY tool. You renovate, you wanna get one of these foam guns, okay? Now listen, you close the handle before you use it. Take the lid off, and you have to get one of these. This is a cleaner. This is somewhat dangerous, and it just sprays, cleans all the crap. And then you take that top off, screw it on, and you can clean out the innards of the gun as well. Open up the little valve, which is opening up in here, and you just spray this out, and then you just clean out the gun until all the goop is gone. Here we go. Clean out the old. There we go. Okay. So now I know the gun is clean. I can close my valve up. Take that one off. Throw that one back on. Ugh. Give it a good shake, and then we can foam this up. Now, this one can here has the same amount of foam in it as, I think, four of the disposable cans, okay? So it's worth your investment to have this, and then you can just shove this in here and have perfect control, and then you just spray, and you start in nice and deep. There we go. And this will seal up the old and the new together. And we're using a door and window foam so it doesn't grow out of the hole too much so it won't have to clean up too much of it. When in doubt, <laughs> just max it out. There we go. Now that's the process to seal up an old house and a new house. So if your addition is 150 years old or five years old, same process. You got to seal those gaps, okay? When you're done, close your valve. And then this is good to go for the next time. And maybe clean off all the crap on the end. So then what we have to do, because these cavities in balloon construction are not the same size as insulation, you're gonna have to cut it and install everything in horizontal, all right? And that's fine. Just a little bit extra work, not a real big deal. If you're wondering what the plan is here, because that's only R13. We're going to frame inside of this wall and insulate again before we put in our vapor barrier. Remember, 
the foundation wall comes out to about here, okay? So if we try to do our thermal break back there, we really aren't going to get a very good job continuing that thermal break from bottom to top. So by adding the depth of another 2x4, we're bringing that wall in, and it gets our thermal break much more consistent flow. The way we're going to solve all of our problem with heat loss after the fact is we're going to put our plastic on. We're going to use acoustic sealant on the plastic right onto the floor. And that'll keep our air from leaking through the wall at the floor level and out of the joints. That's the perfect way to do this. When you're insulating an old house, there's no such thing as the best way to do it. You've got to do it well, and you want to limit the amount of air transfer and heat loss, and try to control your moisture, but there's no perfect way to do it, because the building techniques themselves are actually flawed. So, it's kind of like, we're going to do a great job, and somewhere in the next hundred years, someone's going to have to come back and do a lot of rebuilding. But if you're not in the budget to reframe your whole house, then this is the way to go. Okay, so now that we've shown you how to seal up this part of the house, we're going to go into the crawl space, huh, and we're going to get all of that taken care of. So now we're going to combine flash and bat, which is a spray foam, and then the bat insulation, and then we're also going to seal up everything underneath with a vapor barrier and try to control moisture in this crawl space. If we can control moisture and air and heat all through the crawl space, up the wall, and then through the building, then we're going to achieve our goal, which is to be able to have a space that we can heat without a whole lot of energy loss, a lot of effort, and not a lot of rot. That's the goal. So if you're like me, you bought yourself a home that's way too old for its own good, and you're trying to restore it and bring it back to life and make it function in today's modern climate and modern construction techniques. And so I've got a 140-year-old crawl space here, and it's only a couple of feet deep, and it gets worse as it goes along. So today we're going to show you how to flash and bat. Now this is a little controversial, so I'm sure we're going to have a lot of opinions in the comments section. Uh, welcome all of that conversation because it's hard to get really good information online. So we're going to break this down into steps for you. Step one, of course, was to vacuum up all of the spiders. Wherever you got a damp, cold space where you're going to have rodents, you're going to have lots of bugs and you're going to get lots of spiders. So I'm not much of a spider fan, so I like to clean it all up. Step number two, I want to not have to work in the dirt. It's a little freaking me out. <laughs> so I'm going to put down some vapor barrier and open that up on the floor so that I can crawl around on it. And when I'm done, I'm going to tape all these joints together to create one continuous barrier. But for now, I'm just going to use this as something to stay out of the dirt. Wow. It's amazing how fast this is clean. Okay. That's actually a dead mouse in there. I love my job. <laughs> All right, so when you're using spray foam in your house, you got two options. You can call the spray foam company, and you can call them to come in here from, with their truck and bring their hoses down, and they can do your crawl space for you. That's going to cost you a couple thousand dollars. Or you can go to the store, and you can get one of these kits. In my case, I needed two. They're about 300 and change, depending where you live, I'm sure. Um, so for me, it's a little over $600 to spray foam this whole crawl space, and it's a 20 by 30 space, so that's a pretty good deal. Now, uh, I think every company, every building store in North America should carry this product line. It seems to be the only one that's in a box. This is a closed cell, not an open cell. So for those of you who care to research the difference between that, I'll let you do that on your own time. Um, I like the closed cell. I think it's a superior product, but you do have to be careful, of course. Hmm. Yeah, read the instructions. Those aren't instructions, by the way. That's just a notice telling you to read them. Here we go. Instructions. This is a book. Don't eat it. Don't drink it. Don't be dumb. It means you're dealing with some dangerous stuff, kids. Let's make sure that we use all of our safety gear here, um, including gloves because you don't want it on your skin or it'll take a few days to grow off. Uh, definitely a mask in this situation, and eye protection is a must. There is a time and a place to be careful, and this is definitely the place. We're going to need one of these. They give you a whole bag of these things. These are not syringes. These are just expansion foam spray nozzles. You can replace it. So a system like this, you can use, you can close it up, you can take off the nozzle, throw it in the garbage, you can store it in the cool, dry place, follow the instructions, and you can use it another day in another place. 
So you can also buy bags of these nozzles as well. So you can get good bang for your buck and have one of these handy. We're gonna put on the gloves because we're gonna get right to this. Um, the cans and the hoses themselves are designed to stay in the box, all right? I'll show this on camera. So here's your cans and your hoses. And really what you're supposed to do to help protect the canister and everything that's going on, here's your instructions, all right? Do not over tighten, do not over open, all these types of things, okay? So you know, the handle has a closed position and an open position. It's kind of like a safety, okay? That stops the flow of foam up to this point, and then you can change your tips every time you turn it off. This stuff sets up really quickly, so you don't want to leave it for 10 or 15 minutes with the gun in the open position and not using it. It will dry right there. And then you're done and this whole kit is garbage. All right. The kit here. Oh, yo, yo. Yeah. It is counterclockwise when you can get to it. <clears throat> open cylinder valve, no more than three turns. If you are a He-Man. Half, one, half, two, half, three. Uh, half, one, half, two, half, three. There we go. Now close it all back up. And you can carry it in the box with the canisters. I'm gonna set it down here. Bring mine. And what we're going to do is show you the both coats of the application so that you can see that this is a two coat application. If you have a smooth wall, like uh, let's say you have uh, let's say you have brick or poured concrete, then you can only go with one application. You're still trying to get that one and a half inch, but here we go. Okay. So very important. Make sure your vapor barrier is not going up the wall. You don't want to cover anything off, release the trigger and then I'm gonna shoot it right through the back of this cavity, hit the outside rim joist first all. Just to guarantee I'm getting the right kind of depth of spray. I just wanna get a light coat going, you'll see it foams up on you. That there is only like about a quarter to half an inch. And I wanted to let it set up first before I come back again so that it fills up those gaps. You can see when I spray foam the area that was done last week that it'll fill up all those gaps real easy. This is definitely a two-stage process. If you need to do three, you need to do three. Some of this area here, I might have to do more. Now I'm done for now where I'm sitting. I'm gonna close the gun off. Okay, and then I can reposition. This is a painstaking process. It's all the work is getting in the right position. Once you're here, the job itself is pretty simple. I'm just making sure my rim joists are coated properly. All right, now I'm gonna do the second coat here. Emphasizing closing up all the gaps. Remember the directions said not to spray more than two inches at any one time. This is why this is a multiple coat application because there are gonna be places here that are more than two inches just because of the nature of the stone and the way the application goes. Now the amazing thing is when you're this close to the foam, you really feel the heat pouring off. That's why they suggest you don't have it too thick when you put it on. I can't emphasize this enough. Read your instructions. You can feel how warm this is. It's like sitting next to an electric baseboard heater. So we're going to get out of here. We're going to let this cure for about 10 minutes and then we're going to come back and we'll put on the bad insulation. <laughs> So when you're working in the crawl space, if you're working in a situation like I am with stack stone or anywhere else where you've got a gap that you have to fill, one of the ways you can do that is by using this rigid insulation. And you just kind of eyeball this bad boy, tear it apart, 
shove it in the hole. All right, now that's not to do the insulating, that's to create a backer so that when I'm spray foaming, I can have something that holds the insulation spray foam, and that way I can, can be consistent with my one and a half inch depth. All right, this sometimes is a great way to keep you from overspraying and wasting your money. Just fill up these little gaps. I'll demonstrate how this works. This one's been foamed, but it needs the second coat to get that inch and a half that we're looking for. Here we go. You can see that that holds the foam really well. Here we go. That closes up the hole. And now I'm good to get that, the rest of my inch and a half on here. So we're gonna install our bat insulation now. Now this is an insulation blanket. So it comes with the insulation. It's already kind of adhered to the backside of a vapor barrier. This is a three foot by 50 foot roll. Uh, local building store in my area also carried a four foot, which is good because our minimum code here is four feet from the frost line. All right, so obviously in unraveling this in the, in the crawl space would be insane. It's way too much product. So we're gonna open this up. We'll cut down a piece that's manageable and then we'll go into the hole and install it. Now, I'm gonna roll this back up. Go the other way. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes since we sprayed our wall. You can see the insulation is nice and hard. Now remember, it's not finished the curing process for a full 24 hours, but you can definitely continue insulating over top of it now. Okay, it's gonna be a little awkward to work with. I've cut it down, but even with that, there's a lot of product to fuss around with. My hole isn't exactly three feet tall everywhere yet. So, what I'm gonna do is try to lay this into position. What I wanna do here, this metal strap that comes on it is traditionally used for basement installation. You wanna just cut that out of the way so that we can lift this insulation up and over our wall into our rim joist cavity onto our plate. Here's our example. Okay. So here's our example here. So now I have my three foot blanket up against the wall, up and over top of my rim plate. really what I wanted to show was this blanket wrap comes down here and it has this plastic extension. If you install this on your wall in a basement, this is designed to cover the rim joist insulation, but in a crawl space, what you wanna do is tape this to the plastic vapor barrier you have on your floor to create a continuous vapor barrier. Okay, well, it's really heating up in there. That spray foam while it's curing <laughs> and all this insulation is really warm. That's encouraging. <laughs> so on this video, we demonstrated, I guess we did about 15 linear feet, okay? And it took us about 15 minutes. So you get an idea of how quick this project can move along and how much time and material you're gonna have to invest in it. Definitely worth it. Cause once we're done in here, the space down here, all we need is one supply of heat run for every 300 square feet of crawl space, about a five inch pipe. And this will be just as comfortable as it is up in the living space. Now remember guys, a great insulation project really is four things. You got a good thermal break, you got to have a good vapor barrier, 
you got to seal it so you have an air barrier and you got to control the water on the outside of the house and we're going to do that here on a later date now if you want i want you to click this link to see how this project turns out and just a quick shout out to all our subscribers thanks a lot for hitting that button and watching our videos without you none of this is possible